throwing. Got Morton again. Or is it Kelly? It is Kelly, number 18. That was a fine throw, Bob, under a lot of pressure. I was amazed that he got that ball off and threw it in the vicinity of any kind of receiver. And he hit Kelly right on the run with it. So just an outstanding bit of quarterbacking by Peter Colombo and an outstanding passing. That play covered 16. Holy Cross fighting Boston College and also the clock. It's locked up at 14 on the scoreboard. Colombo to Darty. Darty getting blown out of bounds as he gets down to the 15-yard line. Sheridan blowing him out of bounds on a hard tackle. The clock is stopped with 1.15 up on it. Oh, what a football game. The Crusaders coming in. A big, big underdog, but they've come to play, Gino Capaletti. There's no question about that. They've come to play, and they are playing. Most inspired football here in this game against the highly touted Boston College Eagles. They're moving the ball offensively, something they had to do, and they are doing it. It is second and three from the 14. Colombo pitching to Darty. Darty gets the first down as he gets inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal for Holy Cross. The clock is stopped. 110 remaining in the half. Fred Schmerlis made the stop. Let's check it out, out again. All right, coming right back with the same play. Fakes the Ewald on a dive. This is the one they scored on. Pitches it out to Doherty. Doherty getting down close at the nine yard line. Well, clock is still running, 107. First and goal from the nine. The clock now shows 59 seconds and moving. Peter Colombo. And it goes on the slant to the left side to Hunt. Looks like Holy Cross is looking for that good field position, Gino. Hand it off to Hunt right on the uh, left side there, and it's a little difficult to do any cutting in that particular area there. I don't know if we uh, can pick it up on camera, but it, the field chopped up a little bit at the 5, 10, and 15-yard line there. Very difficult as it's being... Uh, ripped up when you cut so they're gonna have to be very cautious of their footwork especially Peter Colombo if he runs the option play we did see him do that on a previous series in the same uh, vicinity and when he made the cut he did slip so they're right smack in front of the goal post we have 44 seconds to go second down and goal they have uh, nowhere to go but in the end zone Peter Colombo now Coming back after talking it over with Coach Neil Wheelwright, who has this team playing outstanding football. 44 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. It's tied at 14 between Holy Cross and Boston College. It is going to be second and seven to go for the score. Well, they've had great success running that option, uh, faking to Ewald or Hunt and rolling out. So let's see if they stay with it. Pitching Ewald getting down for the score. Larry Ewald going seven yards for the go ahead score with 38 seconds remaining in the first half. Holy Cross has now taken a 20 to 14 lead over the Eagles of Boston College. And you can see the Crusader fans, they're still alive here at Benton Field. And here it is again. Let's check it out. Well, pandemonium. Here's Peter Colombo. He'll fake the hunt on the ride. He'll go down the line of scrimmage. The left hand and pitch to Ewald. Good blocking up there. And the thing that has been working for them is what they stayed with, the option play. They have had success with it. The point after is good. Holy Cross takes the lead 21 to 14, 38 seconds to go at the, for the half. And I can tell you, that's going to be some kind of happy locker room for the Crusaders of Holy Cross. Certainly, the momentum is on their side. Going into halftime, sometimes very important as to which locker room momentum goes to. And uh, there's no question that it will be with Holy Cross, providing Boston College doesn't do something here with 38 seconds to go. Well, I want to tell you, not too many people arrived here at Fitton Field for this, the 73rd meeting, but those that came so far, what a ball game they've seen. I would say maybe about 14,000 fans, capacity 26 at Fitton Field, 
This one of the smallest crowds in the history of this great rivalry. Of course, Boston College has dominated the last 10 times out. The last victory for Holy Cross came back in 1966 when they beat the Eagles on a Donnybrook, 32 to 26. Smith will be kicking it. He got the wind to his back, and it's going to go right out of the end zone, so the Eagles will have to crank up their offense on the 20-yard line. the score 38 seconds remaining of the first half Holy Cross got it by 7 21 to 14 looking at the last scoring drive for Holy Cross they marched 73 yards in 11 plays with 423 used up on the clock Ken Smith will be working into a stiff breeze handoff goes to Conway and Conway slips and slides for a few yards a half minute remaining now well, they had the one, Howlett were one on the setback stop. Bob and uh, they ran the draw play if they did catch Holy Cross retreating too fast and Conway could have picked up a lot of yardage and maybe they would have tried to do something but here they'll be content with just let the clock run out maybe I'd hate to have to go in Julia Kika's locker room at halftime as they're going to be trailing 21 to 14. It is complete, incomplete. Tim Sherwin had the football momentarily. He did the juggling act. One second up on the clock. Let's check it out again. The crossover over the middle. Uh, Kenny Smith throws behind him a little bit. And Sherwin reaches back. Looked like he had it for a moment, but had he... Uh, caught it there was really nowhere to go because he was certainly corralled by the Holy Cross defense one second to go and we'll see what Holy uh, Boston College does desperation pass let's see nope Smith is giving it to Conway and Conway is going to run out the clock as he brings it to the 30 there's the whistle and that is the end of the first half here from Fitton Field on the campus of Holy Cross and it's the 73rd meeting between the Eagles of Boston College and the Crusaders of Holy Cross, and we got a surprise score at halftime. The inspired Crusaders leading the heavily favored Eagles by a count of 21 to 14. Talking about how the Eagles were coming in, a big five touchdown favorite against the hapless Crusader team, a team that had won only one ball game in 10 outings so far this season. And I got to tell you, Gino Capaletti, I didn't think after 30 minutes of football we'd be saying at halftime 21 for Holy Cross and 14 for Boston College. Well, I guess it would be very difficult for anybody to have said that before the game. But not only the score, but the type of play that we're seeing out there, Bob. You know, you can look at offensive statistics. You can look at defensive statistics. You can handicap teams. One thing you can't handicap is the emotion and intensity of a team. And we are seeing a perfect example of that here today in the first half. Holy Cross is just out there determined to play an outstanding football game. They have nothing but victory in mind. It has been a superb first half of football. And I got to tell you, I'm emotionally involved here because when you see an underdog come out on the field with the odds really stacked up against them, and play the type of football that they're playing, it has, a, it has to affect you, and I know it's affected me. Well, Gino, another fine thing on the plus side for Holy Cross, they trailed, and then they got the equalizer, then they trailed again, they got the equalizer, and then they got the go-ahead, and they've been very impressive. Peter Colombo has been absolutely superlative. I've never seen anyone run the wishbone any better than Peter has in this first half. He's doing a magnificent job today. His uh, quick thinking as far as pitching or keeping the ball, the decisions that he has been making have been most accurate. He has been pitching very effectively one-handed because of the way he's running that option. They have hurt Boston College with this wishbone. A lot of teams have been able to run the football against Boston College. I've seen Villanova do it effectively with their wishbone. And I think that this has been part of the game plan of Holy Cross. And they are going to continue to do so if they are able to penetrate and get this kind of production from that particular type of offense. We'll have more halftime activities coming up here from Fitton Field. But before we do, we're going to break for these messages. Boston College. Boston College scoring first in the ball game on a five-yard run by Conway. 
and Gino Capaletti, you can call it. Oh, here's Kenny Smith, Boston College quarterback, just spins right out, has the Conway on a right tackle slant, shakes off two tacklers, slides to the right and in for the score. The point after attempt wide, and Boston College goes ahead six to nothing at this point. And then Holy Cross came marching right back. And here is Peter Colombo on the equalizer as he goes 14 yards. Watch this beautiful option by Peter. Coming out to the left side, he'll fake to Hunt right up the middle and decide to keep right up left side there in for the touchdown. Point after attempt is good. Holy Cross goes out on top 7-6 to six in the first quarter. And then early in the second quarter, Boston College came back to get the go-ahead. And here is the quarterback keep by Ken Smith going in for the go-ahead score for Boston College. There he is bouncing the ball and putting it over his back. And then Boston College elected to go for the two-point try. It was Ken Smith going to Mike Godbolt, and we'll watch it right here. Kenny Smith, watch him sprint out right. Godbolt on the top of your screen, fights off the defender, comes back, makes a diving catch for the two-point conversion. Good defensive stand in that particular series by Holy Cross, but they just gave way as, uh, Holy, as Boston College managed to get in that touchdown. And it was 14 to 7, Boston College. And then here's Holy Cross. Darty going three yards. Watch this block by Hunt, number 35. Makes it easy. And then Makes we had easy. Smith come in and tie it up at 14. And then the last score in this half was Larry Ewald going on a third and seven for the score. So with a 14-14 score at this point, Peter Colombo, option left to watch him go out there, fakes to Hunt. Now the pitch to Ewald, once again, gets some good blocking and just manages to get to the flag of the end zone. A point after attempt is good, and Holy Cross enjoys a 21-14 lead at halftime. And that's it. We'll be back with a kickoff of the second half between the Eagles of Boston College and the Crusaders of Holy Cross. But first, let's pause for these words. To Fitton Field, we're about set to start the second half. Hi, Ken Smith, and he's a fine quarterback for Boston College, ranked number two in the nation in total passing this season. But he's been picked off a couple of times in this ball game, and his team is trailing at halftime. 21 to 14. Gino, before we have the kickoff, I noticed you've been running down some of the stats, and I was wondering if you'd like to reveal some of them to our viewers. Sure, Bob. I think uh, one of the keys here is in uh, rushing yardage, and this is where Holy Cross has dominated. They've been able to pick up 175 yards rushing on 36 attempts in the first half. On the other side, Boston College with 20 uh, attempts have picked up 71 yards. Both teams even in the passing yardage. Boston College with a small lead, 69 yards to 61 for Holy Cross. Peter Colombo has hit four of seven for 61. Kenny Smith, five of 10, but has had two interceptions. And uh, Holy Cross also has uh, had two turnovers and fumbling four times, and they have lost two of them. So if Holy Cross is able to continue to run the football as they are, and if they are able to contain the rushing of Boston College, then they've got a chance for a major upset. Smith kicking off. Mike Curry got the football in the end zone, brings it up over the 10 into the 15, and then he is slammed down. Slammed down hard, so it will be the Eagles taking over. Peter George was the one in on the tackle along with Ken LeBlanc. So the Eagles got it on their 16-yard line as we start up the second half. The Eagles trailing it. 21 to 14. One of the football cards, I believe, Gino had the Eagles a 41 point favor. What are those football cards? <laughs> Ken Smith faking, still faking. Haney chasing him. He throws it, and it is incomplete. Well, he has Flags an offensive down. lineman way downfield. Uh, when Kenny Smith did not throw the screen right away, the linemen who are setting up the block and form the wedge, uh, they know a, well, close to when the ball should be thrown, and they proceed downfield. In this case, Kenny Smith faked the screen to the left, wheeled around, looked for his screen to develop on the right side. It wasn't there. When he decided to run, then it was uh, much too late. So I feel like we'll see Boston College get called for having an ineligible receiver downfield. And the guy that the pass was thrown to was big number 70, John Schmetting. And of course, he didn't even want to try to attempt to touch the ball, but he was about 10 yards downfield. 
Yeah, those big linemen, when they see a ball coming in their direction, they uh, right away look for pockets to stick their hands in. They, they <laughs> want to be sure that they don't look like they're going up for a pass. But anyway, uh, Holy Cross in good position here defensively as they have Boston College deep in their own territory to start this second half action, leading 21 to 14. And once again, I think the key in the first half and the key to this game will be the defense of Holy Cross and if they are able to contain the running game of Boston College forcing them to throw then they might have a shot. Second down at 18. Smith handing off. And it was handed that time to Anthony Brown. Mike Haney and Jay Hallett bringing him down. So it's going to be third down and 15 now for the Eagles of Boston College. In third down conversions for the Eagles, they've converted on two of seven, whereas Holy Cross has converted Gino on six of eight. Third and 15, Ken Smith checks out the defense. He's going to pitch it. Anthony Brown running. Anthony Brown is going to go close to the first down. I believe he got it. Oh, oh nice play. bit of running by Anthony Brown. The 5'11", 170-pound junior out of Middletown, Connecticut. And let's watch that scramble again by number 15. All right, the I formation. Kenny Smith spins out, hands off to Brown. You see Conway leading, and also the guard, and O'Brien. And I got to believe that this could be a very big play in this ball game. Had Boston College been uh, kept back from getting a first down and having uh, to punt from their own end zone or back in that area, it looks like they're a little short on the first down as we uh, see the measurement now. But at least they got some decent field position out of it. Had they been unable to get it and were forced to punt, Holy Cross would have had the ball in outstanding field position with the wind at their back and with a uh, 21 to 14 lead could have made it very difficult. So I believe this is a big key third down play that just took place in this ballgame. And they picked up the first down by inches. So the Eagles of Boston College got it first down from their 26 yard line. Ken Smith, the senior quarterback, handing it off to Dan Conway, the sophomore. Conway from Haverhill, Mass, bringing it up close to the 30 yard line. Dana Cresta from Medford, Mass, a 6'3, 220 pound freshman, made the stop on Dan Conway. Looking at Conway, in the first half, he carried the ball 11 times for 37 yards, scored a touchdown. His longest run was eight yards. Second and a half dozen. Almost two minutes into the third quarter. Holy Cross, 21. Boston College, 14. What a surprise this has been so far. Anthony Brown in trouble. He's running out of it, though. It looked like he was going to be corralled back on the 26, but he picked up an extra four with a good effort. It was Chris Duggan. A 6'2 sophomore who weighs in at 2'10, making the stop. It is now going to be third down and six. Third and six for the Eagles. The Rays seem to be trying to come through the clouds here at Fitton Field on this late November date. Anthony Brown in motion. Ken Smith on the third down, back to pass. Smith with plenty of time, throwing, and it is complete. It's complete. And making the reception, Anthony Brown, and in on the hit was Herb Mahalik. It is going to be a first down for the Eagles. Big play for Kenny Smith and the Boston College Eagles. Watch how long he sits back there. No pressure on him. He waits to the last minute, gets it out to Brown, who is well covered. He's in the same vicinity as Godbolt. Holy Cross lining up with two down men defensively and uh, not being able to mount any kind of rush, but they want they want Boston College to try to run the football against his defense. Anthony Brown chewing his way, and he goes up to the 45-yard line. Duggan and Mahalik in on the stop for Holy Cross. Holy Cross came into this ball game with a record of one up and nine down. A solid five-touchdown underdog, according to the odds makers. Boston College, on the other hand, six and four as they checked into this the 73rd meeting last week Boston College blasted the University of Massachusetts on the handoff to Conway and Conway goes to the 48 yard line big play by Haney McDonald and Haney in on the stop 
Tight end position. He crashed right down the line of scrimmage. There was a hole. Had he not been there, it might have been for some good gain. He's played some outstanding football, and he does that particular play very well when he crashes right down. It is going to be third and one from the 48-yard line of Boston College. Ken Smith, the 6'1", 195-pound senior quarterback, parking the signals. Conway got the first down and then some as he gets it down inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line. Freshman Peter George from Nashville, New Hampshire, in on the stop against Conway. A couple of neighbors, one from Haverhill and one from Nashua, New Hampshire. That's the eighth first down of the ball game for the Eagles, their third one of the second half. It's first and ten. The ball placed in the 44-yard line of Holy Cross. Smith, the screen to Conway. Conway down to the 40, the 35, and dives down to the 30-yard line. Glenn Verrett making the diving stop on Dan Conway. Here it is again. This is the second time in this half we've seen this exact play. The last time they were called for an eligible receiver to the field. All right, he'll take the screen to the left very quickly to Anthony Brown. Wheel away over to the right side. Conway over there had a nice wedge of blocking. McCarty leading and uh, being very careful as to throw a block there. A lot of times those blockers who are leading are careful because of being called for clipping, but a good gain in Boston College on the move now. First down from the 31, Anthony Brown struts it down to the 25. We're nearing the 10 minute mark here in the third quarter. Duncan and McDonald in on the stop for Holly Cross. Holly Cross leading 21 to 14. It's uh, going is the way we expected it, Bob, that if Holy Cross was to spring this upset, they were going to have to contain the running game of Boston College and force them to throw. Boston College has come right out here and running the football. Second and five, the pitch to Brown. Anthony Brown going to the right side, and he gets it down to about the 20-yard line of Holy Cross. Bob Ireland brings him down over 46. Both of these ball clubs, Gino, Pretty young ball club. Holy Cross, definitely young. And when you look at the Eagles, they also got a lot of underclassmen on their squad this year. Should be some good football teams in the coming years because of these young underclassmen, Bob. And once again, the rivalry of these two teams and the type of game we're playing, this is collegiate football. And right here on 27, we refer to it as New England College Football. Our sixth consecutive year of New England College Football on TV 27. New England's number one college sports station. Conway getting the handoff on the third down and about a yard. Mike Jank in on the stop. He's from Burbank, Illinois. We're going to have a timeout. An injured player for Holy Cross down on the field. It is Mike McDonald, number 72 who hails from Northvale, New Jersey, a 6'3", 225-pound senior. Jack Scott and Jack Moriarty, the two trainers for Holy Cross, checking them out. We'd like to remind you basketball fans that on Tuesday night, here on TV 27, we will be opening up the regular season, the first game of regular season action. It will be Holy Cross playing host to St. Anselm's, that game at 7.30 Tuesday right here on TV 27. And then on Thursday night, we'll be back at the Hart Center on the campus of Holy Cross to bring you the game between the Big Green of Dartmouth and the Crusaders of Holy Cross. And on Sunday, Duquesne will come to town and they'll be taking on the Crusaders. More live action at 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon. All on TV 27, New England's number one college sports station. And for those of you who might have missed last night's game on TV 27, it was Holy Cross in an exhibition game winning out over Cuba, 117 to 96. The Crusaders look impressive. Conway on the fourth down, and he picks it up, Gino. Picks up the first down. It's first and 10 from the 18 of Holy Cross. Boston College realizing the importance of a good surge here offensively. Fourth down and one situation at the 20. That offensive line really firing out. Conway picking up the first down, and they uh, keep this drive alive that started way back in their own territory in the vicinity of the 10 or 12 yard line. It is going to be first and 10. 
Eight minutes remaining in the quarter. Brown strutting and striding as he gets it inside the 15 and down to the 12. It looked like Haney was going to have him back in about the 20, but he made a good hurdle, got over him, and brought it down to about the 12-yard line. Jank and Hollett finally bringing him down. Once again, Bob, we have to go back to that big third down run by Anthony Brown deep in their own territory. That kept this drive alive, giving Boston College a chance to control the ball. Second and five. Conway, Conway down inside the 10, down to the five, and he's going to stop right at about at the five-yard line. So it's going to be first and goal for Boston College. Down, I believe they're going to place it on about the four-yard line of Holy Cross. Herb Mahalik and Glenn Barrett finally stopped the runner on that play. It is going to be first and goal from just inside the five yard line. Checking the clock, 7-11, remaining of the third quarter. Holy Cross leading 21 to 14. Boston College trying to tie it up. Conway, got it! Conway falling in on the left side. And it is now Holy Cross 21 and Boston College 20 with a clock stop showing 7:01. Remaining in the third quarter, let's watch that second touchdown in this game by Conway. All right, from the straight T set, two tight ends, just a wheel out and back to the fullback, Conway, following his lead blocker, Anthony Brown. And an apparent easy touchdown from five or six yards out. So Boston College now trying to get the tying score as they march in the second half with the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Foreman is in there. The fake, O'Brien with it. There He's running go. around. He's in trouble. He's throwing, and it is locked down. And Holly Cross still holds on to that one-point lead. With a timeout down on the field, the score, the Crusaders of Holly Cross, 21, and Boston College, 20. Point, and it was O'Brien picking it up. Watch Joe O'Brien, number 10. He ran into a whole bunch of trouble. Well, he was rolling out to the right. There was no receiver out there, and Holy Cross defensed it very well. Then it was just a scramble to try to save something out of it, try to get a desperation two-pointer. I did not particularly like the call, but anyway, it was unsuccessful. Giordano kicking up to the short man, and it is going to be Phil Johnson. Johnson flying over the 35 and up to the 38-yard line. Bill Johnson on the kickoff return, and he was brought down by Doug Alston, number 19. A return of 13 by Johnson, as it was Steve Giordano kicking into that very stiff win. First and 10 with 6.56 remaining in the quarter. Holy Cross leading it 21 to 20 over Boston College. Hot on that last carry for the Crusaders. Schmerlis and Gunnan on the stop for the Eagles. Gino, we're going to check that last scoring drive by Boston College. They marched 84 yards. They used up seven minutes and 59 seconds on the clock, and it took them 17 plays. And once again, the big play being that third down run by Anthony Brown, deep in their own territory. Had Holy Cross been able to stop them there, they would have had the ball in an outstanding field position. Second and seven from the 40. Colombo fumbling, and I believe the Eagles recover, coming up with it, number 79. And that is Chuck Morris. Colombo just couldn't find the football. He knew he had lost it immediately, and it was number 79, Chuck Morris, from South Plainfield, New Jersey, a 6'5", 255-pounder, playing in his last game for Boston College. That's the third fumble recovery by the Eagles. So the Eagles in good field position. They got it on the 39-yard line of Holy Cross. They trail it 21 to 20, but they've got their offense in good gear. Anthony Brown brings it down to the 31. Lost it, but retrieved it. I think it would have been blown dead, but we can expect to see Boston College really concentrate on their ground game now. They know the importance of it, as Holy Cross knows the importance of trying to contain that ground game. And uh, Holy, uh, Boston College now picking up the tempo 
as their offensive line firing out the backs running into the line with better timing and they're getting the holes and they have some strong running 545 left in the third quarter Conway Conway on the second down and a couple didn't go too far McDonald and Howlett bringing him down 21 for Holy Cross 20 for Boston College Maya what a football game the Crusaders have played so far in this series that dates way back to 1896 the last nine times they've played Boston College has come out on the plus side and most of the time with ease Conway again it's going to be close to the first down I believe he got it but we'll have to wait and see Jay Howlett and Peter George bringing down Dan Conway Conway the leading rusher for the Eagles this season it is another first down that's the 12th one now for the Eagles the ball placed on the 28 and a half yard line of Holy Cross the Eagles come up on offense their anchor man in the line is Bill Chaplick number 55 the center Ken Smith behind him working out of the eye Smith wants to put it in the air plenty of time throwing God bolt. oh did he get it if he did it was some kind of a catch I believe they say yes Mike Godbolt on that superb reception here it is again Kenny Smith uh, looking for his man can't find him and watch he just throws with his arm even sitting back he's got a strong arm he gets it right in there comes close to forcing that ball into an area that it, where it could be very dangerous but Godbolt with an outstanding reception but what a strong arm on Kenny Smith He's got some kind of a wing. There's no question about it. Second and inches. Conway got it. Getting down inside the 15, down to the 14. Jay Hallett and Herb Mahalik bringing down Dan Conway. Hallett, 6'5", 230-pound sophomore. Mahalik, a 6'3", 195-pound senior. It is not going to be first and 10. The clock on the move as we're getting into the closing minutes of the third quarter. Now we have a Crusader timeout or a Boston College. Boston College calling for a timeout. Ken Smith will go over to the far sideline and talk to his head coach, Joe Yakika. They're over there on about the 35-yard line. Yakika now in his 10th year here at Boston College, and he has done an outstanding job as the head mentor over the years at BC. His ball clubs have won 68 and lost 36 and in his 12 years as a head coach he's had a couple at New Hampshire his overall coaching career record stands at 75 up and 46 down and he do he certainly does know how to recruit too, Gino oh, he's done an outstanding job as a fine football program and uh, has proven that throughout the years and against Holy Cross's record eight up and he's never tasted defeat in this long Jesuit rivalry the longest one of the nation. Time wise 340 left in the third quarter. Conway has now run the ball 20 times for 67 yards. It is going to be first and 10 for Boston College when time is back in the ball down to the 14 yard line of Holy Cross. Anthony Brown will flank it on the left side. It goes to the second man. Excuse me. That is Anthony Brown. It was McCarty who was flanked. We read the numbers incorrectly. We caught that five. McCarty 45 and Anthony Brown 15. Anthony Brown running the second man out of the eye, bringing it down to the 10 yard line. So it's going to be a pickup of five, second and five now for Boston College. And it seems as though, Gino, their offense is really running pretty smoothly. Aided by that good field position following that touchdown, uh, certainly picked up their momentum. Anthony Brown again and he gets it down to the four. Anthony Brown not only has good speed but he can really pick him up and put him down. Dana Cresta the one bringing down Anthony Brown it's going to be third down and about a oh a yard to go for the first down and as we mentioned the ball right down inside the five yard line of Holy Cross Holy Cross trying to protect a 21 to 20 lead. 235 left in the quarter now. 
Smith marking the signals. Conway going the left side, makes it to the three. Cresta in on the stop. Conway has scored a couple of times in this ball game. Smith has scored the other one for Boston College. And for Holy Cross, their touchdowns have come by Colombo, Doherty, and Ewald. With Smith, Mike Smith hitting on all three conversions. It's going to be first and goal from the three. Smith flags down. He's tripped up, and he goes down on about the six-yard line. I think we're going to have motion called on the Eagles as Jay Hallett was the one tripping up Ken Smith. Let's see if we can find well, where that uh, problem occurred. You can see the center moved a little prematurely. And uh, the rest of the team was a little uh, like a count late. Now the center might say that he was right and the rest of the team was wrong. But then again the rest of the team might say wait a minute here. So evidently snapping the ball too soon and movement along the line that we're going to get illegal motion called against Boston College. And we'll see what Holy Cross does with it. They'll refuse it. And Boston College will stay at the six yard line. Of course, they'll uh, lose the down, so. Put it. them at second down and uh, six. As Gino just mentioned, second and six to go for the score. The Eagles trying to get the go ahead touchdown right here with 2.04 left in the third quarter. Holy Cross 21, Boston College 20. The power ride to the right side. Smith wants to put it in the air. And he underthrows his man who is all in the clear. Had him all open. Mike Siegel all by his lonesome out there. And the pressure was put on by Gannon. And Smith just underthrew him. And let's watch it again. All right, with the uh, deep back set, watch Smith. He'll just slip down that line of scrimmage all alone. Kenny Smith. Just underthrew him as uh, he was wide open, no question about it. Mike Siegel, the tight end, and a little bit disturbed because he knew he had a touchdown. Kenny Smith, of course, upset with himself as well. Third and six to go for the score. Ken Smith Oops. in trouble. He's going to be sacked. Back on about the 11 yard line. Oh, this could be big for a Holy Cross here. Things didn't look that good. At one point, they had first and goal at the six-yard line. Now in three plays, Boston College has gone back. Let's watch this mix-up. And Holy Cross right on top of Kenny Smith. He either spun out of there the wrong way. It seemed to me that the backs were going left and Kenny Smith was going right. So once again, some confusion. It's going to be a 18 or make it a 28-yard field goal attempt by Mormon. He's going to try to put Boston College ahead. The kick is up. And the kick is no good. It's off to the right. So with the clock stopped down on the field with 117 remaining in the third quarter, Holy Cross hangs on to a one point lead over the Eagles of Boston College. And once again, getting back to that right, Kenny last play. All right, Mormon is not following through. Why? He just kind of popped it. And uh, I don't know for what reason. It's because of the turf or what down there, but he has not been following through like I've seen him. He did that on that first point after attempt, and here in this field goal attempt, just cupping it, not following through, and pulled it once again to the right. Holy Cross, first down from their 20. Colombo to Hunt. Hunt running over the 30. Gets a block. Still going. Down over the 40. Over the midfield stripe. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds on about the 40-yard line of Boston College. Elias and Murphy blowing him out of bounds. A pickup on that play of 39 yards. And let's watch it. All Senior right. Steve Hunt, number 35. Colombo will going. give it to him. He breaks through there. Once he breaks through, maintains his balance, starts breaking to the outside, gets some blocks, outruns one defender. Gets downfield beyond the midfield mark. So the ineffectiveness of Boston College's offense when they had great position as they went backward, it picked up the momentum for the defense of Holy Cross. They passed it over to the offense now, and they're on the go. It is first down from the 41-yard line of Boston College. Colombo to Ewald. Ewald to the 40. Ewald goes to the 40-yard line, and tripping him up that time was Fred Schmerlis, number 71. We're under one minute remaining of the third quarter. That key tackle before the field goal attempt 
by Holy Cross was made by Mike Haney and Bob Ron Karate. We never did have time to give him credit. Second and nine. Colombo keeping it down to the 35, still running, still going, and he's going to get the first down. Down to the 29-yard line of Boston College. The Crusaders are really charged up at this juncture. And let's watch that tough run by Peter Colombo. Takes the ride once again. He starts cutting it back. Now starts cutting against the grain, working his way back, trying to find an open spot. Lost a little ground as he made that last cut. It is going to be first down from the 29-yard line of Boston College. The Crusaders got it with eight seconds, seven seconds now remaining in the quarter. Hunt driving straight ahead. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. The whistle sound. And that is the end of the third quarter here from Fitt Field. And this is the 73rd meeting between Holy Cross and Boston College. And the Crusaders lead it by one. 21 to 20 over the Eagle. You're looking at the Holy Cross cheerleaders, and so far they've had a lot to cheer about. And this is the 73rd meeting between Holy Cross and Boston College. Who would have thought? Checking into the fourth and final quarter of this 73rd happening that the Crusaders would be on top by a point, Gino Capaletti. Well, and it was a big point after a uh, decision that Boston College made. It could prove to be very costly for the Eagles in today's game. They uh, had scored the tying touchdown. It was 21 to 20. They decided to go for a fake, and now, with that being unsuccessful, they trail, and it put their strategy in a little different category, but Holy Cross now on the move. Second and seven as we start up the fourth quarter from the 26th. Colombo gonna try the draw. He's gonna get, oh, well, maybe about a yard or so as Chuck Morris wraps his big arms around Peter Colombo, the mini sized quarterback of the Crusaders. So now it's going to be third down and still about seven to go for Holy Cross. Holy Cross with the ball, third and seven. The Crusaders this season averaging only nine points per ball game. This is their highest scoring output so far. This season, 21 points up on the board. Colombo, the jump pass, incomplete, intended for Brian Darty, overthrow. Looking at Holy Cross's highest output prior to this ball game, three times they scored 14 points. Last week in their victory over Connecticut, 14 to three, and then against Colgate and New Hampshire. This the final game of the 1977 season for both ball clubs and also the final football game here on New England College football. It all started back in September. Fourth down and seven. Colombo firing. Got his man. First down, I believe. What a catch by Mort. Outstanding catch by Mort. Let's Bob watch it Mort. on the ISO camera. Fourth down, a very key play by this Young receiver as he goes down, watch him come back with it now, up and away. What an important catch to keep this drive alive. Holy Cross with a one point lead and a touchdown here could make it very, very important in their efforts to spring a immense upset. First down from the 18 yard line of Boston College, Holy Cross on offense. Colombo pitching to Johnson, he's in trouble. And he's brought down by Jack Kent, blowing in from the left side. The linebacker position on the left side, Jack Kent. Let's watch that tackle by Kent again as he blew in there and made the contact. Here he is, getting Johnson and wrapping him up. That's the seventh tackle for Kent on the fifth one, unassisted. A loss of nine, second and 19, the ball back now on the 27-yard line of Boston College. As we check the time here in the final quarter, we see 13 minutes and 11 seconds left. Hunt goes in motion and whistles sound. Going to be delay, delay a ball game on Holy Cross using too much time. They'll lose five more yards. So now it's going to be second and a couple of dozen. The ball of the 32-yard line of Boston College. 
the last couple of plays, the Crusaders going in reverse. I'll tell you, Gino Capaletti, you're going to have to give a lot of credit to Neil Wheelwright and his entire staff for a superb preparation for this ball game against the Eagles. The way he has uh, inspired this team uh, and the way he has got them playing is really a credit to him. Colombo. Peter throwing it, and it goes as an incomplete forward pass, finally throwing it over towards Larry Ewald. And really putting the pressure on was Jim Sheridan, number 81. So the clock is stopped with a dozen minutes and 54 seconds. It's going to be third down and still 24. Third and 24. Colombo back. He's throwing, throwing long, and it was intended for Morton, and it's broken up. It was Murphy almost picking it off, Paul Murphy getting a piece of the action. So now it is going to be fourth down and 24, and Morton is going to try to punt it. He'll go for the coffin corner. He'll be hitting it from the 40 two-yard line of Boston College and let's see can he get it out of bounds or will it stop and be blown dead it will be blown dead good job done by the punter Bob Morton as the Eagles will take over some 92 yards away from where they hope to go in a few minutes as they trail it 21 to 20 with 12 39 left in this ball game Boston College will take over on offense and so far this season, the Eagles have displayed a pretty good offense. In their first 10 ball games, they've been averaging 22 points per contest. First and 10, Conway running straight ahead and brings it up to the 13-yard line. Dan Conway, the sophomore fullback from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Chris Duggan in on the stop for Holy Cross. It is now going to be second and six after that four yard pickup by Conway. Almost 40 minutes gone by here in the last quarter. Ken Smith back throwing intercepted. Jank on the interception coming down to the 20 and he's going to be blown down on the 20 yard line. Jank on the interception. That's the third time that Smith has been picked off. But Here it is. Kenny Smith back to throw. He got whacked right he threw. Definitely threw to the wrong side. He did not read the defense correctly. Holy Cross rotating that way right in the vicinity that he throw. That he had thrown. And had he gone to the other side, he had the one-on-one -on -one coverage. I was surprised that he went back to that side. But a big interception. Holy Cross with a great opportunity here because they have everything on their side right now. And Namely, momentum. First down for Holly Cross on the 20-yard line of Boston College. With it is Ewald. Ewald to the 15, still going down to the 11-yard line. Larry Ewald on a great second and third effort. Picking up a good nine yards. Jeff Jamar and Doug Alston on the stop. It is going to be second and about a yard to go for Holly Cross down on the 11-yard line of Boston College. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Colombo, first down. As he brings it to the eight, it's going to be first and goal, Gino. Well, I can't stress enough the importance of this uh, drive for a touchdown. If Holy Cross is able to come up with a touchdown here and with the inspiration that they're playing with, the desire that they have, the momentum, 11 minutes to go in the ball game. They could be in great position for a major, major upset. First and goal from the eight. Colombo handing to Hunt, and Hunt brings it to the five-yard line. Steve Hunt on the carry for Holy Cross. It is going to be second and goal. 
Hagen and Jamar in on the stop for the Eagles. Second and goal, the ball outside of the five-yard line of Boston College. Holy Cross leading over the highly favored Eagles with 10-42 remaining in the ball game by one. 21 to 20, and Holy Cross trying to add some more points to the board. Go, go, go. With it is Ewald. He gets down inside the five, down to the four-yard line. It is going to be third and goal. Jack Kent and Clint Gaffney, along with Al Hagen, all in on that tackle as Ewald was the ball carrier. So third and four to go for the score. Holy Cross electing to stay on the ground. Playing it as uh, safe as possible. I'm sure that if they are not successful with this play, they'll have themselves in position for a field goal, which could be very important as well. Third and four. Colombo at quarterback. Colombo keeping as he goes to the goal line. I don't believe he got it, but he got right to the door of the goal line. All right, now we got a decision to be made by oh, Wilfried, and he's going to call a timeout because he wants to think about this for a second. They're right at the one-foot line, fourth down, right in front of the goalpost. You're leading 21 to 20, nine minutes and 30 seconds to go. You have momentum on your side. You know the importance of a touchdown and also the importance of a field goal. What do you do? We'll soon find out. Right now, it is Coach Neil Wheelwright talking to Peter Colombo. It's been a long season for the Crusaders. It's a big one coming up. It is going to be fourth down and less than a yard to go for the score as the tension mounts here at Fitton Field. On the far side, Joe Yakika. In his 10th year at Boston College, pacing the sideline. And it appears, Bob, as Holy Cross is going to go for the touchdown. And I have to say that a touchdown here could just about put this game out of reach for Boston College. A, here we go. A field goal, of course, would give them an, an advantage that Holy Boston College would have to score a touchdown. But here we go, Bob. Colombo at quarterback. Pitching. Dirty. Dirty. Got it! Darty goes in for the score! I'll tell you, that's an outstanding pitch by Peter Colombo. That option play was a gamble. It's one that has worked for them. He went down that line of scrimmage. He was about to get hit. He picked it back one-handed. It was once again accurate. Doherty picked it up. Kelly Elias coming up to force him inside. Let's watch Colombo go down the square line of scrimmage right there. He's just about to get hit. Kelly Elias coming up hard, but Smith is there to just get him off balance. Here's the point after. Smith That's putting it good. up, and he got it. And now Holy Cross has jumped out on top over the Eagles of Boston College by eight points with 9.32 remaining in the ball game. Holy Cross 28 and Boston College 20. Bob Foraker with Gino Capaletti and Gino, what a way to close out New England College football this year. Completely forgot about the cold wind that's blowing in here because this is some kind of football game, an inspired game by the underdog Holy Cross Crusaders coming into this game. No one gave them a chance. They are doing it themselves. They are leading 28 to 20, nine minutes and 30 seconds to go. The call now goes to the defense. Boston College knows what they have to do. Can they do it? Smith kicking into the wind. It's being held up by Mother Nature. It's a free ball. Holy Cross recovers. Bob Ireland, wow. number 46. Wow. Wow, wow. Holy Cross leading it 28 to 20. And on that kickoff, the wind held it up. And it became, as you know, after 10 yards, a free ball. And we're going to watch it all unfold again. It almost happened to uh, Holy Cross earlier in the game. Let's watch it up high. The wind's blowing it back. McCarty comes up too late. Can't field it. Ireland there to recover at the 20-yard line. Joe Yukika with his head down. Can't believe it. Here is Ewald. Ewald to the 10. Going down to the 8-yard line. It's going to be close to the first down. It's 
going to be close to the first down. It is Paul Murphy in on the tackle. Bob Moore also assisting. The clock is moving. With 9.19 remaining, and this the 73rd meeting. Getting back to that scoring drive that was set up by an interception, Jenks interception, Holy Cross went 20 yards in six plays. It is gonna be first and goal from the eight. Colombo pitching to Darty. Darty turning the corner and going out of bounds down on about the seven yard line. Going to their favorite play once again in that position. The play that has got them the first downs that they need. The play that has got them the touchdowns that they have needed. The option pitch to Doherty. He has been able to turn that corner. And the pitches once again, as I have pointed out so many times in this uh, game, is Peter Colombo goes out. It's a one-handed pitch. It can be risky, but he has been ever so accurate with it. 8.57 left on the clock. Colombo. What a game this Colombo has played to Ewald, and Ewald goes to the five. You know, Gino, at the conclusion of the game, or near the conclusion, we'll have the MVP, which is the Omelia Award. Last year, it went to BC's Glenn Capriola. And this year, of course, is still up for grabs. But I'll tell you, if I had to vote right now, I'd put a vote in for Peter Colombo. I'm certainly, uh, he is going to be considered very strongly, but it would be difficult to speculate at this point. What a team, what a game by the Holy Cross Crusaders. All of them deserve it. Unreal. Third down. Colombo keeping. Colombo going to the one-yard line. Peter Colombo brings it down to the one-yard line. Now, Gino, it's going to be fourth down and about a yard and a half to go. You lead it 28 to 20. With the clock moving, do you go for the field goal or do you go for the touchdown? It looks like head coach Wheelwright is going to call a timeout and Colombo is going to come over and talk to him. Well, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> uh, 28 to 20, realizing, of course, the importance of a field goal because uh, Boston College, should they score, could go for the two-point conversion and tie it up. A field goal would make it... Uh, Imperative that Holy Cross, uh, Boston College come up with two scores, either a touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal, but another touchdown, and you know what that does to Boston College. Forces them to score three times, and two of them have to be touchdowns. So I'm sure Coach Wheelwright, Peter Colombo, the offense of Holy Cross all know the importance of this decision, and once the decision is made, they know the importance of execution in this point on the other side of that line of scrimmage the Boston College Eagles know exactly where they stand their backs are against the wall they are down 28 to 20 they know the importance of this defensive stand so what will it be we will soon soon see okay it's fourth and about a yard and a half to go for the score Colombo checking the defense the handoff touchdown Touchdown, Holy Cross! Holy Cross going in for the score! Pandemonium! Steve Hunt getting the score for the Crusaders. Just the quick slant by Steve Hunt, the big fullback on the option. I mean, on the uh, wishbone. I'm getting as excited as the fans here. Pandemonium here at Fitton Field. As Holy Cross has jumped out ahead 34 to 20. The point after attempt coming up. Incredible. Smith will try for the 35th point. He hasn't missed yet. And he sucks it through again. So with 7.58 remaining in this the 73rd meeting, the Crusaders of Holy Cross 35 and the Eagles of Boston College 20. Capaletti. I'm here. I'm I can't here. believe it. There's head coach Joe Yakika down there. Hey. And if he believes in prayer, he better start right now. He's finding it hard to believe, too, but Coach Joe Yakika has been in many of these ball games. A coach soon learns what emotion can do to a team. And we are all seeing it right here how this inspired Holy Cross team has come on to take on the high flying Eagles. Took them on. 
head to head have gone out ahead and they got, now have to call on their defense their defense playing inspired football as well Boston College knows they have to score twice and go for two point conversions on both cases in order to win this ball game. kicking off will be Mike Smith into the win again it's going to be taken by the up man running it down the field and with the kickoff that time is Poirier, Dave Poirier running with the football. And he brings it up over the 40, up to the 44-yard line, a return of 15 yards. And making the tackle was Herb Mahalik, along with the guy who kicked it off, Mike Smith. Checking the time, 7.52 remaining in this ball game. Smith is back. He is in trouble, and he throws it away. Let's see, are they going to call it grounding it? I don't think so. Kenny Smith was shaken up on the previous series back in his own end zone. He went off the field holding his side. Now he was planted on this attempt to run a screen up the middle. He is still down. Watch Kenny Smith take a snap from center. He'll go back. He's waiting for that screen to develop right over center. There's no one there. Then he throws it to Joe O'Brien, who is not ready for it. And immediately he's drilled into the ground. He is still prone and getting attendance from the Boston College trainer. So we'll making the sack, Gino, was Mike Haney, number 81. We got a final on the University of Massachusetts Lehigh ball game in the Division II. Lehigh prevailing over Massachusetts in a scoring brawl. Lehigh 30, Massachusetts 23. Mm. 